Okay. So this is using a 2008 R2. Uh, most everything I'm going to show you here is going to work in 2008 or 2008 R2. So I think, uh, and uh, actually, to tell you the truth, most of this will work in 2005 also, a lot of these features. Now, if anything's different, I will try to point those out. Okay, so I've got a few reports here that I've created. And let me open up just uh, this one named query here. This is just a simple report. There is no parameter on the report at this time, as you can see, nothing in my parameter folder here. And let's go ahead and run preview this report. And this gives me a list of all my addresses that are, in, are inside of AdventureWorks. I know we're all tired of looking at AdventureWorks, but the data here is not really important. The important part are the parameters. So, All right, so I want to put a parameter on this report. And I want to do it built into the query itself here. Uh, to do it in the query, it's really simple to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and upload my data set properties here. And right here in the bottom, I have my where clause, where the person that the state is in the U.S. I'm going to add something else to my where clause here right below it. It's going to uh, give me a parameter on my report. And in fact, I've cheated it a little bit, and I have it right below here. Let me bring it up so you guys can see it. And there it is right there. So I'm just adding an and, and then the city is in that city. The city is one of my uh, columns on my report here. Now I'm using in. And then I put in the at city, and I put parentheses around that. You have to have parentheses around it for the end to work. You can do equal to at city instead. The reason I do in is because uh, if I decide to change this to a multi-value parameter, then I'm already set, ready to go. Uh, you don't get any kind of performance loss from doing this. So this works great for doing the end. This just checks that one city that comes back. If you have multiple cities, then it looks at multiple ones. So I'm going to go ahead and use in and then at city there, just in case I decide to change it to a multi-value parameter in the future. And I'm going to click on OK. And when I do that, you'll see that it creates a parameter for me automatically on my report. And that's all it is to it. So we go to preview now. And there's my little box I can type in the city. So if I type in Orlando in there and run this, I'll get some cities back. But what if my user is uh, not the best speller in the world and they, they don't know how to spell Orlando and they type in the word wrong? Of course, they're going to get no results back. So wouldn't it be nice to have a drop-down box there with a list of all the cities that you want? And you can do that. We're going to need another query to make that happen, though. So I'm going to right-click on data sets and click on Add Data Set. And I'm not going to use a shared data set. Uh, we're not going to be covering those in this session. I do a session on uh, administration that covers shared data sets and report parts. And we but for right now, I'm just going to embed this. So, and I'm going to call this city and param. And you may want to call it city available values or something like that. Just something so you know that it's being used for your parameter. And I, I need a query now to give me a list of all my cities. And I have that query right over here in my folder, saved. And I'm just going to open that up and copy it out and paste it over into my query. So one of the important things here is you want to have a distinct on this, and you want to have an order by on it. So in the drop-down menu, I just want to see each city one time. If I don't do a distinct, then I would see Orlando, 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 That's right, each row that exists in my database. So I don't want to see that, of course, so I'm using the select distinct. And then, of course, an order by clause, I want to see my cities in alphabetical order. that will make it nice and neat for my end users so they can uh, uh, find the cities they want very easily. Hit OK. And now I'm going to open up my city parameter here. I'm going to click on Available Values. Now you can actually specify values. So I can click on Specify Values and hit Add. And I could type in information here. I could type in Orlando if I wanted to here. Of course, that doesn't make much sense to do that because if I get new cities in my database, and I would have to come in here manually add those. So we're going to check the option that says Get Values from a Query. And I'm going to select my city parameter here. My value is going to be city, and my label is going to be city. Now, there's a, a, a label field and a value field here. The value is what's passed into the actual parameter, or into the query, and the label is what the end user sees. Now, I don't have a city ID column, so uh, this is just going to be city and city for both of these. But if uh, maybe you had a, a drop-down list with, say, some products, then you, you would show the product name to the end user, so the label would be product name. Uh, but the value would be, say, product ID or something like that. You want to use IDs or integers for your values as much as possible to speed up your query. And the other option here is default values. Now, in this case here, I could do a query. I could say, give me top one or something like that, if I wanted to, to get the uh, uh, some city there. 
But uh, I'm going to go ahead and specify a value here. I'm going to hit Add. And I'm going to type in Orlando. I'm going to make sure I spell it correctly there. And we're going to click on OK. And when I preview this report now, it should default to Orlando, and it should have a drop-down menu of all the cities. So let's preview this. There we go. Orlando is automatically in there. I didn't have to do anything. And in my drop-down menu here, there's a list of all my cities. So I can select which city I want. If I select another one here and hit View Report, I'll see all of the values from that city. All right, so that is available in the default values. All right, let's talk about drill through now. So I have a list of all these, these cities here. Um, drilling through to uh, another report is a very common thing that people like to do. So if I'm looking at the details here, I want to see uh, something specific. So I have another report here I'm going to open. Let's say that this report here is my detailed report, showing me the addresses and cities and states. Uh, but I want to I want to see an overview report, just a list of cities, and I want to be able to click on the specific city and drill down to this report. So let's go do that. I'm going to open up another report I have here called Cities Drill Down, and this could have other information on it. I've just got a list of cities here, but you can imagine maybe this has got a uh, a total here of sales or or something like that. So this is kind of a a higher level overview of uh, these cities. It's not going to be a, a detailed report of each city. And I want to be able to click on one of these cities here and drill down and see the details of the city. So let's go to design here. I'm going to right click on this text box, go to text box properties, and click on action. And oh, I already have the action on here, so let's set that to none so I can so you can watch me build it from scratch. Let's go to action here. All right. So a couple of actions. You have a go to report, which will take you to a separate report. It has to be a report that's in this project, and I want to, that's exactly what we're going to do today. Uh, bookmark would be another location on this report, and then you also have to go to URL. A uh, go to URL works great if you've got, like, say, uh, an address, and you want to be able to click on that and pass it into, you know, Bing Maps or something like that, and and have a good website come up with that address on it. Or maybe you have the ISBN for a book, and you click on that and you pass it into you know, Amazon, you get that book back. But today we're going to cover going to reports using drill downs. So I'm going to click on a drop down menu here. Those are all of my reports that I have in this project. And I'm going to select, uh, let's see, I think it was Query was the name of it. That was the one we were using a second ago. And I'm going to click on Add. Click on my drop down menu. And this is going to give me a list of all the parameters that exist on that query report. I've only got one parameter on there, named City, so that's all I'm seeing here. If you have multiple parameters, they would all show under this list here. And if you have multiple parameters, uh, you need to have those values either one mapped here with some sort of value coming from this report, or two, you need to have default values on them on that detailed report. So I'm going to go ahead and select city here. And what value do I want to pass into that? I want to pass in the city value, which is the only field I have. 